If Islamic apologetics were the Titanic, 2020 would be the iceberg that sank it. Okay, I agree that it makes no sense to compare Islamic apologetics to something as massive as the Titanic. Islamic apologetics in 2020 was more like a Nazi U-boat that accidentally torpedoed itself. 2020 will be remembered, not as the year of the coronavirus lockdown, but as the year of the coronavirus meltdown. As long as there is warm air in my lungs and cold blood in my veins, the Islamic apologetics meltdown of 2020 will not be forgotten. The meltdown officially started in June when Sheikh Yasser Qadi admitted that there were holes in the narrative about how we got the Quran. But we can't understand why Dr. Qadi was compelled to admit this and why there was such a massive backlash without understanding the background. Three things led to the interview and the meltdown. One, a few years ago, Jay Smith and Hatun Tash started bringing dozens of different Arabic Qurans to Speaker's Corner, proving that Muslims use different Qurans in different parts of the world. Ever since then, people have been showing Muslims differences in different versions of the Quran, differences which completely destroy the myth of perfect preservation. How many of you know about the Hafswash and Dori Quran? That, is, that word, is, is that word the same as that word? Yeah, this one is the wash, and this is what it says. It's totally different. It's totally different. Yeah. Thank you. Here we have Bushra, Nushra, yeah. as a good tie-in to disperse. Is that mean, meaning Number the same? One, I, I'm not going to look at the English because the English is... Yeah, read the Arabic. The Arabic says Bushra. Yeah. And this says Nushra. It Two, Farid of Farid Responds, a.k.a. Farid Leaks, leaked some of Yasser Qadi's private emails in which Dr. Qadi privately expressed some doubts about the preservation of the Quran. So it became public knowledge that even some Muslim scholars reject the standard narrative. Three, for the past few years, Muslim leaders have been trying to figure out what to do about the massive numbers of Muslims, especially young Muslims, who are leaving Islam. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. Polls conducted in the Muslim world reveal that up to 5% of Muslims in some of the most conservative Muslim countries in the world are closet atheists. Previously, previously, according to me, when, an, when a person from Saudi Arabia or from the Gulf country went to America or went to Western country, the chances that you know, they would deviate from the deen would be maybe 1 or 2%. That's it. But nowadays, mm -hmm. the chances are more than 25%. And if we don't take constructive steps to deal with this, it is going to become an avalanche, a tsunami. Now, there isn't much that Muslim leaders can do about this, but no one wants to be the cause of the apostasy, and no one wants to contribute to the apostasy. So, Muhammad Hijab, tactical genius that he is, decided to fix these problems by having Yasser Qadi on his live stream so that Yasser Qadi could explain that his emails were misinterpreted and that the people who are claiming that there are different versions of the Quran are wrong and that Muslims should stop leaving Islam because the Quran has been perfectly and miraculously preserved. Unfortunately for Hijab, the interview did not go according to plan. And it's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. The standard narrative does not answer some very pressing questions. And I don't think it is wise to bring it up in public because it should not be said in public. I don't even want to be explicit. It should never be brought up in public. This is not something you discuss amongst the masses, ya akhi. It's not wise. Leave it at that, ya akhi. Muslims immediately started complaining that Dr. Qadi was destroying their faith in the Quran. So Hijab decided to abrogate that part of the interview. Eventually, he abrogated the entire interview, just like Allah had to abrogate entire chapters of the Quran when Muslims forgot them. Dr. Qadi, on his channel, had to abrogate the comments section because so many Muslims were complaining that he was increasing their doubts about the Quran. 
Soon, Dr. Qadi, like Hijab, had to abrogate the interview. But the damage had been done. Christian apologists started using clips of the interview to show that Muslim scholars and apologists were lying to their listeners about the Quran. Ex-Muslims started using clips of the interview. Even Muslims who don't like Yasser Qadi started using the interview to attack him. And this has to be probably the, the most damaging podcast, I think, to date in regards to the Durat and the, the destruction it caused. He goes on to Muhammad Hijab's platform and starts giving the preservation of the Quran. Question. But it wasn't a complete disaster for Islam because the holes in the narrative interview did lead to some epic remixes. That the standard narrative, that the standard narrative, Boy. that the standard narrative, you'll finish, has holes, in it has holes, that the standard narrative, that the standard narrative, Boy. that the standard narrative, you'll finish, has holes, in it has holes. Instead of ignoring the interview or responding to it by providing some kind of evidence for the preservation of the Quran, Muslim apologists around the world decided to lose their minds. When Muslims told Muhammad Hijab that they were having doubts about the preservation of the Quran, Hijab replied by thumping his chest and screaming at them. But every cloud has a silver lining, and Hijab's tantrum gave us another epic remix. And this Muslim, weak Muslim in the, in the West, sending me the emails and this, I'm losing my faith, and I'm a heart that I'm really get the hell out. You are never a strong believer in the first place, you weakling. You're a weakling because you don't know your own tradition. You're sitting there watching Netflix, and you don't read the books of Islam. That's why you are where you are. I'm your teacher, boy. Muhammad Hijab started sending me and the apostate prophet perverted messages telling us to do things to each other that many viewers had to look up because, unlike Hijab, they're not experts in fetish porn. Then Hijab started insulting and attacking our wives, posting veiled threats of torture and rape. He even suggested that non-Muslim women secretly want to be raped by Muslim conquerors. Meanwhile, Ali Dawa was asking his fans to join him in praying for Allah to curse us with diseases. He even posted a YouTube video announcing that once Islam takes over, ex-Muslims will be publicly executed. There's a reason why there's a capital punishment, because people like you, little weaklings, who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt, and we're proud of that. You know what that led to. We're proud of that. We're proud of that. We're proud of that. It just backfired on you. We're proud of that. We're proud of that. We're proud of that. It just backfired on you. Minj, who runs the channel The Muslim Apologist and was supposed to be my nemesis for the foreseeable future, got arrested for child pornography. News channels in his country even ran stories about the police raid on his apartment. Pegawai terus di sebelas jenayah seksual dan kanak-kanak, Jabatan Siasatan Jenayah, Ibu Pejabat Polis, Kontinjen Selangor. The Dawa Gandists at Speaker's Corner, the former free speech capital of Great Britain, successfully transformed it into Sharia Corner, first by forming a big enough mob to convince police to silence Hatun Tash, and later by physically assaulting Hatun for criticizing Muhammad. If my Does father like is Muhammad, have respect to the like dog. <gasps> hey! Hey! <sighs> the amazing part about the assault on Hatun was that the Muslim who hit her who was shouting Allahu Akbar earlier, had been told by some of the other Muslims there that if there's some sort of physical altercation at Speaker's Corner, he should claim to be a Christian. So he did. And then tens of thousands of Muslims online fell for the taqiyya. The lie was eventually exposed by some Muslims who had a bit more integrity, but even today I get messages from Muslims telling me that the man who hit Hatun was a Christian, even though the Muslims who initially spread the lie have admitted that they were wrong. By the way, notice the parallel 
to the myth of perfect preservation here. Someone spreads a lie, but the lie becomes so popular in the Muslim community that people believe it even after it's been thoroughly debunked. Why are lies so popular in the religion of truth? But the meltdown wasn't over. Ijaz Ahmed, a disciple of Shabir Ali, started hurling racial slurs at his opponents and doxing them in an effort to get them killed. So you back piece of shit, go f yourself. Do you understand? Okay. And your mother I'll was a whore. Ibn Anwar, hold on. I think it was what? Sister. I, oh, me. wow, you're doxing me. You, right. you will be found. It's public stuff. information, but it wasn't intended for you. Did you say no. you will be found? Did he literally say you found. will be found? Mohammed Hijab, Ali Dawa, Farid Leaks, and Adnan Rashid then joined forces and begged their followers to complain to Patreon so that Patreon would demonetize me and the apostate prophet. Not only did Patreon not demonetize us, we ended up getting hundreds of new supporters. And the entire time all of this was going on, Sheikh Yasser Qadi was filing false copyright complaints against anyone who posted clips of his Holes in the Narrative interview. Dr. Qadi even tried to dox Islam Critiqued, but he had filed so many false copyright complaints, he couldn't even keep the names straight, so he doxed the wrong guy. Finally, Dr. Qadi announced that he was going to respond to us. I was actually looking forward to seeing how he would address my points. But he didn't address a single argument I've ever made. Instead, he called me names. I have rarely come across somebody who is more vulgar, vile, foul-mouthed, noxious, repugnant, depraved excuse of a preacher. He's a vulgar, obscene, evil jerk. I mean, honestly, there's nothing else to be said. Yes, the so-called scholar who kicked off the 2020 Islamic apologetics meltdown tried to undo the damage he had done by lying, doxing, and name-calling. And to this day, he just can't figure out why so many people are leaving his religion. But he did teach everyone a new word. Or David Wood, I have rarely come across somebody who is more vulgar, vile, foul-mouthed, vicious, repugnant, depraved excuse of a preacher. Well, that's a quick rewind of the Islamic apologetics meltdown of 2020. Are things going to get any better for Islam in 2021? All I can tell you is that I'm expecting a lot of remixes this year. Where is Allah? Where is Allah? This is such a foolish question. Where is Allah? Where is Allah is an extremely important issue. Where is Allah? Where is Allah? This is such a foolish question. Where is Allah? Where is Allah is an extremely important issue.